Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and today I want to talk to you about the second derivative test for functions of two variables. Now what this is, is it's our method of classifying critical points of functions of two variables. But before we get into it, let's just remind ourselves of how this works for functions of one variable. Okay, so if you had a function of one variable, you looked at second derivative because its second derivative tells you about the concavity of that function. It tells you which way it's bending. Okay, so if the second derivative was negative, that means it's bending down. Okay, it's concave down. So any critical point with a negative second derivative must be a maximum. Okay, and conversely, if your function's bending up, if its second derivative is positive, if it's concave up, then any critical point there must be a minimum. It's at the bottom of a valley. Okay, and then the other possibility is, well, maybe your second derivative is zero, and your conclusion in that case is just you have no conclusion, okay? Maybe it's concave up, maybe it's concave down, you know, maybe your minimum, maybe your maximum, or maybe you're neither, okay? There are situations like that as well. It turns out for a function of two or more variables, the answer gets more complicated. It's trickier to figure out the concavity of your function just because it can be concave up in some directions and concave down in different directions. And it's tricky to figure out, you know, is it concave up in every direction and things like that. Okay, so we're gonna focus on just functions of two variables here. It's even nastier for functions of three or more variables. All right, so let's first think about what we wish the answer was, okay? And then we'll sort of show why that's wrong, okay? So maybe your first guess, to show that a function is concave up, so your critical point is a minimum, maybe you just check the two partial derivatives. Maybe you check the second x partial and the second y partial, and hey, maybe if those are both positive, you know, that means it's concave up in the x direction and concave up in the y direction, maybe that means it's concave up in every direction, so it's a minimum. Okay, but we're gonna show that that's wrong right now. I'm gonna give you an example to see why that doesn't work. Okay, so consider the function x squared plus y squared plus 3xy. Okay, it's straightforward to compute, um, you know, where the critical points of this function are. And there's only one, the only critical point is at 0, 0. And that's straightforward to compute the second derivatives of this function as well. Okay, so just take the x derivative twice, take the y derivative twice. You're gonna find out that if you plug 0, 0 into those, you just get two in both cases. Actually, those second derivatives, they're just constant functions. They're equal to two everywhere, okay? So in particular, yeah, two is bigger than zero, two is bigger than zero. So our guess is, hey, maybe that critical point is a minimum. Maybe this function, it's concave up there, okay? But if I plot this function, I'm gonna see that's wrong, okay? So again, just to remind you, this tells me it's concave up in the y direction and concave up in the x direction. And that's true, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It is concave up in those two directions. But if I plot the entire surface, what the function looks like is something like this. It's just, again, just sort of a bent piece of paper in a sense. But in particular, if you go in this direction between the x and y axes, it's actually concave down in that direction. Okay, it looks like an upside down parabola there. And in particular, that means that this critical point, 0, 0, it's not a minimum. You can go down from there. So it's actually a saddle point. Okay, and sort of what's going wrong here is, yeah, we, we showed concave up in two directions, but not in every direction. There are infinitely many different directions. So how do you handle that? What do you do? And to answer this question, we introduce a new function that we call d. And it's a function of two variables, just like your original function f. And the way that you construct it is you take the second x partial, multiply it by the second y partial, and then subtract off the square of the mixed partial derivative. Okay, and remember we learned in the previous lecture that it doesn't matter if you take the x partial then y partial or the y partial then x partial. Those two mixed derivatives are gonna be equal to each other for most functions, at least as long as those second partial derivatives are actually continuous. So all functions that we work with in this course anyway. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you do x then y or y then x, you'll get the same thing for that mixed partial. Okay, and this function d, I mean, it looks kind of weird and I apologize, we don't have time to go through a derivation of where it came from or why this function does what we want it to do. But the way to think about it is it measures uniformity in the concavity of the function. It measures how much the concavity is the same in every direction, either always concave up or always concave down. Okay, so let's go through our characterization of critical points now, now that we have this d function at our disposal. Okay, so our first case is if d is positive and the second partial with respect to x is negative, then that critical point is a maximum. Okay, so the way to think about this is, well, this part here is telling me that in the x direction, it's concave down. So in the x direction, it looks like a maximum, right? It's the tippy top of a parabola, upside down parabola. 
okay? And then D being bigger than zero, what that tells me is, well, concavity in every direction is the same, okay? So it's the tippy top of a parabola in the X direction, it's also the tippy top of a parabola in every other direction, okay? If it's concave down in the X direction, it's concave down in every direction because D is positive. That's what D being positive signals to me. Okay, next case is, well, if D is positive and the double X partial derivative is also positive, now it's a minimum, okay? And the way to think about that is, well, the double X derivative being positive, that tells me that it's concave up in the X direction. And then again, D being positive, that tells me, well, the concavity is the same in every direction. So it's, if it's concave up in the X direction, it's concave up in every direction. So that critical point is the minimum, right? It's at the bottom of a valley. All right, next case, if D is negative, that tells me concavity is not uniform. It's concave up in some directions and concave down in other words, in, in other directions. The concavity switches, okay? So that's the saddle point, you know? It looks like a minimum in some directions. It looks like a maximum in other directions. Okay, so if D is negative, that's a saddle point. And unfortunately, if D equals zero, then we just don't know. There are cases where it's a maximum, there are cases where it's a minimum, there are cases where it's a saddle point. So in those situations, you have to be a little bit more clever to try to figure out what your saddle point, or sorry, what your critical point looks like. Okay, so let's return to this function x squared plus y squared plus 3xy from earlier, and let's classify its critical point properly this time. We already saw that there was only one critical point at 0, 0, and the second x derivative was 2, and the second y derivative was 2. Well, the other piece of information that we need to actually classify this critical point properly is the mixed partial, okay? And the mixed partial is going to be 3 in this case, okay? So just take the x derivative, then y derivative, or y derivative, then x derivative. You'll find that the answer is 3. Okay, and then to actually classify this critical point, what you do is you construct this function d. Okay, so I'm going to take the second x partial, to multiply it by the second y partial, and then subtract off the mixed partial squared. Okay, so it's going to be, well, 2 is my second x partial, and then multiplied by my second y partial, which is also 2, and then subtract off the mixed partial squared, which is 3 squared. Okay, so it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 3 squared, which is 9. So we're going to get that d function, no matter what x and y are, d just equals 5. It's actually a constant function. It equals 5 everywhere. Okay, and in particular, because that's less than 0, this is case 3 of our classification of critical points up above. On the previous slide, this was the third case. D is less than zero, so that critical point must be a saddle. The D function, it's sort of telling me that the concavity is not uniform. It looks like a saddle. It's concave up in some directions and concave down in others. Okay, well, let's go to a different function, one we haven't seen yet, and let's, again, find the critical points of that function and try to classify them. Okay, so this time let's look at the function x plus y squared all divided by x squared plus 1. Okay, so our first step is find the critical points. And this is something that we did in a previous lecture, but let's just go through it really quickly. The way that you find critical points is you compute the x partial, and then you compute the y partial, okay? So both of these, I mean, it's just straightforward derivative rules. For the x partial, you have to use quotient rule. For the y partial, you don't, fortunately, because the denominator is constant with respect to y. But so compute the x and y partial, and then you need to set both of them equal to zero, because we're trying to find critical points. Okay, and if I set those equal to zero, you can forget about the denominators. The denominators have no effect on when the, those fractions are equal to zero, so you just set the numerators equal to zero. So two y's gotta be zero, oh, that means y equals zero. Okay, and then the numerator over here equals zero. Okay, so numerator over there equals zero. Okay, and now just simplify, simplify, simplify. Okay, if y equals zero, well, I can forget about this term because that just equals zero. So x squared minus one must equal zero. That just comes from here after y equals zero. If x squared minus one equals zero, that just means, just means x equals plus or minus one. Okay, so what I'm left with after I put all this together is y has to equal zero and x has to be plus or minus one. So I get two critical points. I get one zero and minus one zero. Those are my two critical points of this function. Okay, so that's the first half. I've found the critical points. Now I've got to use the second derivative test to classify those critical points. All right, so let's do that. And to use the second derivative test, I've got to start taking second partial derivatives. All right, so start off, I've already got first partial derivatives, so now just take partial derivatives of those first partials. So to get my second x derivative, I just take the x derivative of the x derivative, take the x derivative of this first partial, okay? And I mean, it starts getting really ugly at this point, so I'm skipping over the calculation. Like, it's just a routine quotient rule 
derivative question, but I mean, it is nasty and you have to do some simplification on the top there to get it looking this nice even. I mean, it's not nice, but if you don't simplify that, it looks even worse. So simplify the numerator as much as you can, leave the denominator just as something cubed. Okay, so that's my double x derivative. Next up, let's find a mixed partial, okay? And I'm just gonna take the y derivative of this guy over here on the left. Unfortunately, this actually isn't too bad because again, the denominator is a constant with respect to y, so you don't have to use the quotient rule. Okay, so we're gonna find that the mixed partial is just this guy here. If you prefer, you can take the x derivative of the y partial, you'll get the same answer, right? It doesn't matter which order you do the x and y derivatives in. Okay, and next up, I want the double y partial, so just take the y derivative of this one on the right, and you'll just get two over x squared plus one. Okay, so that one's the easiest of the, the, par the second partials to compute. All right, now that you've got all your second partials, you have to construct that function d that we talked about. So d equals, you know, the double x partial times the double y partial minus the square of the mixed partial. Okay, so we're just gonna plug all of these pieces in to their appropriate slots. Okay, plug in those three formulas there and simplify, simplify, simplify. Okay, again, you've got to simplify a whole bunch here before you even want to do anything with this function. So I've done my simplifications here, okay? And after you simplify, it ends up looking like this. Okay, the denominator is not too bad. The denominator is just different powers of x squared plus one, but on the numerator, you do have to expand things out and collect like terms and all that. Okay, so simplify the numerator as much as you can. Okay, once you get to this point, once you've found your d function, there are only two pieces of information that you need to keep track of, okay? You can forget about this mixed partial at this point, and you for can forget about the double y partial at this point. You only need to keep track of the double x partial and d, okay? So I'm gonna forget about everything else now, okay? I keep d and I keep my double x partial because those are what I use to actually classify my critical points. Okay, and I've got two critical points. I wanna classify both of them. Okay, well, I'll just work one at a time. I'm gonna start off with this critical point, one zero, okay? So the way that you classify it is you just plug one zero into D. And when I do that, I get an answer of minus one half, okay? Plug in X equals one, Y equals zero. And you're gonna get D equals minus one half, which is less than zero. Okay, and then we go back to our characterization of critical points and see, oh, if D is less than zero, it's a saddle point. Okay, so one zero is a saddle point, great. Okay, now move on to your next point. Okay, now move on to minus one zero. I wanna classify that point as well. So now just plug that into D. So plug minus one in for X and zero in for Y. And this time you're gonna find that D equals plus one half. So in particular, D is positive. Okay, unfortunately that means you're not done yet. Okay, if D is positive, there were two possible cases. It could be a max or it could be a min, depending on the sign of the double X derivative. Okay, so that's what I've got to compute next. If D is positive, you've also got to compute, well, the double X derivative at that point. So in other words, just plug in X equals minus one and Y equals zero into this double X derivative. Okay, and in this case, what you're gonna get is, again, you're just gonna get positive one half, which is bigger than zero. All right, so the characterization this time, it tells me that that function is concave up in the X direction and D being positive tells me the concavity is the same in every direction, so it's just concave up. Okay, it's concave up in every direction. So it's a minimum, okay? That second critical point, minus one zero, is a minimum. Okay, so yeah, the first critical point was the saddle, the second critical point is a minimum. And just to, I don't know, maybe tie this together and make things feel a little bit more real, let's just show you the graph of that function so you can see what's going on, okay? And I mean, it's sort of hard to orient these functions so that you can actually really see what the graph looks like. Um, but what's happening is we got two critical points. Um, the first one, the saddle, one zero, is over here. Um, and I mean, what's happening is it's sort of going up in the y direction and it's sort of concave down in the x direction. It's doing something like that. It's a little bit hard to see, but something like that's happening. Okay, and then the other critical point, minus one zero, this critical point over here, that's a minimum. Okay, and you can sort of see that. I mean, it's it's going up as you go away from it there. It's going up as you go away from it there. It's It's concave up in every single direction around that point. So it's a minimum. Okay, it's the bottom of a valley. Alrighty, so that'll do it for the second derivative test, and actually that's going to be my last video on applied calculus. So thanks so much for watching, everyone.